finally here we are. I am the last one. With my mentor, we are investigating the up-to-date strategies in injection therapy of partial rotator cutters and in the prevention of cutibacterium and acne infection after shoulder surgery. My name is Victor Weininger. I am from orthopedic department, and my supervisor is Gabor Skalitsky. Our mission to use fewer steroid injections in our practice and reduce the C acne culture with effective skin preparation. Our vision, a fewer side effects uh, in patient thanks to fewer steroids and less frequent surgical side infection due to less C acne germ around the shoulder joint. Uh, we have two main topics, both of them uh, with, uh, work with uh, shoulder disease. The first one is the comparison of safety and efficacy of different injection therapies for partial rotator cutters. And the second one is paroxysm skin preparation reduced the incidence of cutibacterium acne in skin around the shoulder joint. Both of them uh, will be a systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, let's talk about the first uh, topic of us, the comparison of safety and efficacy of different injection therapies for partial rotator cuff tears. It's good to know rotator cuff disorders are the most frequent disorder of the shoulder joint, and uh, the disease of the rotator cuff disorders elevate with aging. Uh, almost 70% of the elderly people have some kind of shoulder uh, uh, rotator cuff disorders. And uh, the other important thing is if the tear is less than 50%, it's not necessary to operate it. But of course we need to relieve the pain, we need to relieve the, the inflammation. And for this, the gold standard is the intraarticular steroid injection. As we know, the steroid injection has many side effects. That's why we would like to, to substance these uh, steroid injection with other uh, medical stuff or medical uh, drugs. Here's our clinical question. What is the difference between the effectiveness and safety of steroid injection and other injection for partial rotator cuff tears? Population the partial rotator cuff tear and comparing the corticosteroid injection with hyaluronic acid, PRP, saline, and ADRC. We are, uh, our outcome is the clinical score, side effects, and uh, complication. If we use less uh, steroid injection, we have hopefully we have fewer side effects. Uh, we made our search, and uh, here is our search key. We almost have 8,000 uh, different articles. Uh, after the duplication removal, we had 5,000, and uh, with the full, uh, with the abstract and uh, title selection, it looked 168 relevant for us. Uh, after the full text selection, nine uh, articles looked eligible for us. We are now in the, the data extraction. Uh, this picture shows the different injections, the diff nine different articles with 556 different patients with partial rotator cuff tears. The six different uh, injectables medicine is corticosteroid, hyaluronic acid, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, saline, and uh, outlook adipose-derived regenerative cells. And uh, we have an, uh, articles which comparing the hyaluronic acid plus PRP with the others. Uh, our second topic is the skin preparation reduce the incidence of cutibacterium acne in skin around the shoulder joint. Sorry. Yes, uh, in the 1% of all cases, some kind of infection develops after shoulder surgery. Uh, the most common organism is cutibacterium acne, and uh, cutibacterium acne is a, a gram-positive anaerobic bacter which occupies the, the sebaceous glands and, uh, and hair uh, follicles. The problem is our current surgical skin preparation against uh, C acne is ineffective, but there are so many, not so many, there are many uh, RCT which are showing us the peroxid skin solution effectively decreased 
the, the germ count of C acne is around the shoulder joint. Uh, so our hypothesis, the peroxid skin preparation reduced the germ count of the C acnes around the shoulder, and if we have less C acnes in the skin, leads to less uh, subsequent surgical infection. Uh, these are our two main topics now, and hopefully we are going to finish them the first half of the next year. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I would like to say goodbye with this quote. I think it's totally uh, defined my previous three months. There are no mistakes, only opportunities. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much. Congratulations, very nice talk. I particularly like your network. Can we go back to the network? Networking is important, isn't it? So, so your network, uh, so corticosteroids, uh, three studies, PRP, three studies, uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, three studies. Um, how, uh, how similarly were they used? I mean, where you say corticosteroids, were they all of the same? type of corticosteroids in the same dose, given in the same way. Yes, thank so, you. so the question is about, you know, uh, this is a nice network, but I want to understand if your nodes, the big blue circles, are they clinically homogeneous interventions yes. or are they very different interventions? Yes. Thank you very much for your question. It's really relevant because uh, this is our uh, problem that three different corticosteroids we have. Same dose, but three different corticosteroids. Uh, and, but we have only these articles, so we, we need to use them, I think. Uh, and the other problem is uh, with the hyaluronic acid. They use different molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Uh, it's really hard to, to find similar drugs because uh, only very few articles uh, concentrate in partial rotator cuff tears. So the problem with the population, we screened almost 5,000 articles and uh, there was a big problem. Uh, some articles just uh, use one population, partial, partial rotator cuff tear, full part rotator cuff tears, and impingement syndrome. And uh, there was no three different groups, just one group. And that is the problem, that's why we have only nine different articles. And all of them are cities. Seven of them are cities, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can do the network meta-analysis, but then you have to take the results with a pinch of salt, as they say, you, mm -hmm. you have to doubt the results in the end, what you will have. What was the second project? Oh yeah, there's the PICO, I wanted to go to the PICO. So they all get skin preparation, Yes. but some of them get peroxide solution, some of them don't. And the skin preparation, how? It's been alcohol-based skin preparation. Okay. Because... Uh, the second most common uh, uh, bacteria is streptococci of the, uh, the uh, skin and uh, the alcohol-based skin preparation is perfect for, to kill them, uh, streptococcus, but uh, we need to reduce the C acne with additional uh, peroxid solution. So if you go back to the slide where we were, so 1% of cases get this awful infection. Yeah. So you have to identify a lot of studies with a lot of patients to see meaningful event numbers to be able to compare to, you know, yes. many, many hundreds of cases if you want to, to see if it, if it does make a difference at all. Well done. Thank you very much.